Ben Stark here, recording my first Wilds of Eldrain draft video. You asked for me to make some content, so I am. Also, I'm settled in in my new studio, my girlfriend's closet here in uh, DC. Um, hope everything looks and sounds good. It's my first one in a while, so feel free to comment on the tech and all of that. I'm always open to improve the setup. But I, with uh, the MagicCon Vegas main event, limited tournament of the year coming up, I did want to deliver some content. And uh, we're going to be doing traditional best of three because that's what that tournament is. And I kind of feel like the best of one hand smoother changes things. I'll probably do some best of one videos, some best of three videos. Maybe I'll do some on Magic Online Draft Leagues where I've been mostly playing. But I know that, you know, almost everybody, including me, prefers to look at Arena to Magic Online. And so we're going to do Arena best of three to get the best practice we can for Magic Con Vegas, but also to use Arena, the program that actually looks like a program in 2023 and not Microsoft Excel. Okay, so this is not gonna be a hard first pick. Gumdrop Poisoner is excellent. Makes a food at instant speed, which is important so they don't see it coming. You do an end of their turn, then you untap and gain three and kill their three three and get a three two lifelink. It's a pretty good card. I wouldn't call it broken or anything. You know, it's not S tier, but it's a solid first pick. Um, as far as other cards I like in the pack, Princess Takes Flight is very good. For those who haven't used this saga or the Reflection Saga from Blue Red, the trick with these is you bargain them away or bounce them or something when they're after Chapter 2 goes off, and then Chapter 3 never happens, and so they don't get the creature back. The creature just stays exiled forever. Or in the case of the Blue Red Reflections one, um, you don't have to sack the Reflections. They, you just keep the Reflections forever. So that's the trick with those. Um, the only other card in that pack that's even remotely on that level would be the uh, Imodane, the red uncommon. That is, uh, the Adventurers 5 make two 2-2s, two and then 3-mana 2-2, two two, when it comes into play, all your creatures get some so in haste. Really good aggro card. Both red-black rats and red-white celebration aggro are quite good. Those are both aggro decks in this format I'm always willing to draft. I think Gumdrop Poisoner is better, but if you have like a big preference for aggro, you could take that card. Okay, so here, the best card in the pack is the Archon of the Wild Rose. Uh, this is the rolls format, so it's very easy to get a couple of rolls on creatures and then play this and hit them for, like, a ridiculous amount of flying in the air. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to take it or the Gingerbread Hunter. The Gingerbread Hunter is, you know, a black and two to kill a creature and then green on the, like, other side. So it's very easy to play in basically any black deck. I think the Archon is enough better that I should take it, but of course I will have to be black-white to use both the Archon and the Gumdrop Poisoner. Now, I'm not that worried. Like, you might think, like, oh, but Gumdrop Poisoner makes food, and so, like, don't you want to have a lot of food? But not really, right? How many... It's two mana per food you sack, so in order to kill a 6-6 six, six with Gumdrop Poisoner, you have to have seven mana, right? Sack two different foods. So, like, you're, what you're really looking to do with this card is just have the one food in play, and then for five, you kill a 3-3, three, three, and, like, it makes a food. So, you don't need to be a food deck to get good value out of Gumdrop Poisoner. And I really like Black-White Grindy in this format. Um, Black-White is a really fun deck. You have good removal. You play, like, the Hopeless Nightmares and the Hopeful Vigils. And uh, you just the 3-2 Celebrant that returns them Scry 2. And you just get value, value, value. All right, let's see. I don't think this rare is good, right? No, we're not sacking a bunch of things to bring back a bunch of things. That's, like, some kind of constructed build around. Cheeky House Mouse is fine. Nothing special. But the commons in this pack aren't great. So it's basically Cheeky House Mouse or Root uh rider fawn i think i'm actually gonna take the fawn the house mouse is maybe a little better in like a red white aggro but with in a black white grindy i'll play it but it's not an exciting card and remember we're only a couple of picks in i could still go green white auras and splash gumdrop or i can still go black green and just not play archon or i can go three color green black white the green the fixing is really good in green in this format Root Rider Fawn filters, you know, just as a good card, a two mana, one three that adds a mana, and then you can filter. And, like, Prophetic Prism's fine because you can bargain it away, and Brave the Wilds is excellent fixing since it's, you know, basically just a tap land, but it also makes a 3-3 three, three in the mid to late game. So this is a format where I'm definitely not against playing multicolor green. Uh, this sweeper is really good. Adjustable sweepers are always good and limited because you can just, you know, like sandbag your big creatures, put out your small ones, and then call two or three or whatever and keep some one or two of yours and kill all of theirs. So we're definitely going to take it, uh, especially for black-white, which is not an aggro deck. It's a grindy deck, and it has small creatures. Uh, so, you know, you just go ahead and choose, like, you know, three and then keep all of your creatures and kill, like, two of theirs and stuff like that. 
Um, or call two because it's power greater then, and then you keep your ones and twos. Um, and obviously, you know, you can call whatever you need to call. You can sweep the board if they're way ahead. Like, adjustable rats are always very good. Non-adjustable rats are only good in, like, the right, like, draft decks and archetypes with a lot of card drawing and late game. But uh, adjustable rats are just awesome. Okay, so, doesn't look like there's anything from black or white we really want. Minstrosity is a fine playable, not great. Uh, we might have to do some kind of green-white control or something, which will be an interesting deck, not something I draft often. But Archon of the Wild is going to be at its best in, like, with, with green, which does rolls really well, and white, which does rolls really well. And I think green-white is supposed to be an Auras deck. So, uh, I don't know. I haven't drafted green-white Auras, and uh, the Wrath isn't going to be at its best in an Auras deck. But, you know, we haven't seen any black, and black's pretty deep in this format. And uh, we are, it does look like we're seeing Auras cards, right? Like Tangle, Span, Lookout, and Archon of the Wild are both like Auras cards. I was hoping to draft one of the many decks in this format that I draft frequently for you on this in this draft video and not draft something for the very first time. Uh, but, you know, this is where the draft is sending us, and you know that's my philosophy. I'm going to go where the draft sends me. Um, okay, so Stone Splitter Bolt is good removal, but I think it kind of looks better than it is, right? Like... One red X deal X damage to a creature is fine, not very good. So, like, yeah, you can bargain it, and then it's kind of efficient. We'll probably just take Cooped Up here as a decent removal spell. Um, all right. Second Tangle Span Lookout. So, I mean, this card is very good in Green White Auras. I mean, a 3-mana 2-3 that draws you a card over and over and over again is quite good. Uh, like I said, I don't draft Green White Auras very much, but I think that's what we're going to draft here. It's going to be an interesting one. I mean, it's definitely what we're seeing. I mean, Red Tooth Vanguard is also very good. This is a card that I think is a lot better than it looks. So, like, you can make enchantments multiple times during almost every game. So this is a 2-mana 3-1 that you just start attacking with, and if they don't trade with it, they're taking 3 a turn, and if they do trade with it, you just get it back for free. You know, you have to pay mana, but you don't have to spend a card. You just cast an enchantment and then get it back. So we're definitely in a green-white or a seat, and uh, that's what we're going to draft and see how it goes. So Dutiful Griffin... I don't know. I think I would play it, but I don't know about a five drop that, like, I have to sack two different uh, enchantments to bring back. Nightly Valor is not the best either. People usually have mana up. There's plenty of interaction in this format. I don't really think I love either of these uncommons, even though they both look like they're great for my deck. Um, I think the Valor's probably better, given we have double Tangle Span Lookout. We want to play all the auras we can, but I don't find either of those cards very exciting. Um, gonna grab break the spell. It's at minimum. Actually, no. This is be this is more main deckable than spider food, but this is best of three. So we can just board in spider food when there's good targets. So I I, I, uh, I changed my mind. I'm gonna take spider food. Um, Charm Clothier is a good card to put a, put a roll on one of your creatures. Knight of Doves came back. This is another good card for green white ores. So I mean, look, we're getting hit in the face with the deck. I mean, like I said, it's not an archetype I draft very often. I don't know that I've ever drafted a dedicated green white. I draft a lot of multicolor green, and I draft, like, white-black uh, grindy and white-red aggro. I th I think, I mean, if you look at the signpost gold on common for green-white, it's, uh, you know, the pumps all your aura creatures. It's clearly what green-white is meant to do in this format. I just really haven't drafted it or played against it much. I don't think it's a deck that uh, is going to be in every pod, but I think we're clearly in a seat for it. Okay, so Woodland Acolyte is quite good, right? Um, put a permanent back, that's nice, it's real cheap, and 3 mana 2-2 two, two draw card is good. Not not amazing or anything in modern magic. It's funny, like, 10 years ago, 3 mana 2-2 two, two draw card would have been, like, a very good card. Now it's just, like, a fine card. But the other ability is nothing to sleep on. I mean, you know, you put an Archon back or, you know, some power card, even even if it's just, like, a Charm Clothier or whatever, that's good that you get to draw your 3-3 three, three flyer in the late game. Shrouded Shepherd is good. We could consider a light black splash, given we do have the gumdrop, but... I don't know. I think this is just primarily going to be a green-white auras deck, and I think Woodland Acolyte is good enough to take over Shrouded Shepherd, given I don't we don't want to splash black for Gumdrop Poisoner. Maybe they're maybe they're trying to get us to do it anyway. Another Shrouded Shepherd. Uh, so what's in this pack? So there's an Evolving Wilds if we want to splash. There's Shrouded Shepherd, which even if you don't splash is okay. I mean, a two mana two two that pumps something when it comes into play is solid. And, I mean, you can always have a few, like, near-free ways to play the uh, the Cleave Shadows. Like, you know, you can just make a black with Rootwider Fawn or something like that. Stockpiling Celebrants, usually, you can get good value of that, too. It's, like, one of the staple commons for the black-white deck, where you bounce all your uh, Hopeless Nightmares and stuff. Not as good in green-white, though still, you know, a card I would probably play. But I think Shrouded Shepherd is almost certainly the pick here. Unfortunately, we can't use Talion the Kindly Lord, but, you know, that's, like, a first-pick quality card. It's not, like, an S-tier Broken Rare, either. It's not, like, that big of a deal. 
Feral Encounter, I don't think is very good. I mean, it's fine, right? Like, you can look at five cards, and then you can cast one of them, you exile it, and you can cast it this turn only. So, you, you know, if you have five mana, you can only cast a creature that costs up to three mana with this. And then the creature does its damage on the next turn if it lives. Beginning of the next combat. So this turn, right? If you play it this turn, at the beginning of the next combat phase this turn, yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if that's actually better or worse than Graceful Takedown. It's definitely a good card. Like, you want to play it, and Graceful Takedown's a good card. Just kills anything for two mana. I'm going to try the rare because, you know, the set's been out a week. I've played with all the uncommons and commons plenty of times. I don't think I've had this rare yet. Um, you know, like, I've done probably 15 to 20 drafts. So, you know, I know the format, but it's not like I've played every rare a ton of times or anything. All right, Slumbering Keep Guard is another one of those cards that, like, I don't use that much that often because you don't have that many enchantments out in most decks, but in green-white auras, you should have enchantments out, so this should be a pretty strong one-drop. Uh, I just wanted to check something. Again, I haven't drafted green-white auras a single time. An aura enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. If you cooped up something, you still control the aura, even though you don't control the creature, so I think you draw cards, so that's, that looks pretty good. Okay, so these two roll creatures, uh, Ferocious uh, Werefox is much better, and the reason is simple. Uh, it's because it's an instant. So if they block your 2-2 with theirs, you get to roll at instant speed, and it sticks around. Uh, other than that, they're both both cards you're going to play in green-white, but I think that uh, Ferocious Werefox is a lot better than Besotted Knight. Okay, Graceful Takedown or Root Rider Fawn. Graceful Takedown is just awesome removal for this deck. I mean, we're going to have Enchanted Creatures... Toadstool Admirer is another one that I think is, you know, four green-white auras, so I've never really played with it. It doesn't look exciting, and I think the Slumbering Keep Guard is probably much better, so I don't know if we'll actually play it or not. Troublemaker uh, Oof, I probably pronounced that wrong. Hopefully it's Oof. Um, yeah, that's at least we're going to board it in, if not main it, so I think that's probably a better pick. I don't know if the Admirer is good. I don't think so. And, uh, you know, you only want so many one-drops. It's nice to have one or two of the playable ones to play on turn one, but you don't want to draw multiples of them ever. So, like, Slumbering Keep Guard seems really powerful if we're going to draft an Aura's deck, so I'm probably going to play those as my one-drops over to Toadstool Admirer. So, Unassuming Sage. Eh, I mean, it does make an Aura on turn four. You can play it on turn two if you don't have anything else to do. Two mana, two, two is really bad. This isn't like the old days. Um, that said, I'm doing an Auras deck. I have Archon, I have Double Acolyte, I have Knight of Do Doves. I have so many Aura synergies here. So, grab an Evolving Wilds in case we splash. I probably won't play Evolving Wilds if I'm a two-color, green-white, uh, aggro-ish deck. But if I do decide I want to splash, and I already have a Gumdrop Poisoner, so, you know, if I get, like, a Gingerbread Hunter or something, I might splash. So I have really good removal, three Graceful Takedowns, and, uh... I don't have good two drops. I need to get some two drops. But I guess if you're going to aura up your creatures, then you can pretty much play anything on turn two. So maybe stuff like Unassuming Sage works for that. Like play the one I need to on turn two, and then on turn four on, they make auras. So this is a pretty weak pack for us. I mean, it's not really a great pack for anybody. I mean, like, Obra's a nice fairy if somebody's blue-black fairies, which is a deck I like. And Frantic Firebolt's a good, you know, removal spell for red-blue spells. Um, none of the cards in this pack are particularly good, though. This is, like, this rare is way more fancy than good. Like, it's fine to play, but uh, it's not an exciting card. I don't think this removal spell's playable. I don't really want to kill something and give them uh, a 1-1. One -one. Seems more of, like, maybe a potential constructed card or something. You know, your control deck with sweepers, you kill their planeswalker or whatever. Um, I think I'm just going to have to take on Assuming Sage, which is a horrendous first pick. But my archetype's wide open in this pod, so hopefully I'll get some better on commons and rares the rest of the pack. And I really do want to make sure I have enough two drops. I have, I'm have. i happy to play the Fawn, the Vanguard, and the Shrouded Shepherd, but it's not a good play on turn two. Oh, hello, Gruff Triplets. I don't care how aggro I am. This might be the best card in the entire set, so we're going to definitely play that. It's better in most green decks because than mine by a lot because most green decks are, like, rampy, and they play, like, a lot of mana sources and stuff, and you play late games. This card's busted no matter what. It'll be totally busted if I cast it on turn six. It's just I'm going to play, like, 16 or 17 lands, and uh, that's it as far as mana sources. There are a lot of green decks where, like, you have 18, 19, 20-ish mana sources because you're like a ramp deck but uh it's just such a super broken card it's still no question to play it in my deck and take it there 
This is a card that I think is a lot better than it looks. This is, Don't sleep on cards like uh, Cursed Courtier and that rare that's a 1-mana 3-2 that has to curse when it comes into play. It's, it's one black to cast. Because this is the roll format, right? So you just play a card like this, then you just put a positive roll on it, any one but Cursed, of course, and then it knocks off the Cursed and you've got a 4-4 lifelink. A 4-4 lifelink attacking on turn 4, like, that's an awesome magic card, right? So, like, and it's the same thing with the 1-mana 3-2 I'm talking about. Like, it comes into play as a 1-1, one, one, then you just roll it, and then it's a 4-3. Or you just bargain it away, get some value, and it's a 3-2. So this, this is an excellent card. Uh, I don't want to overstate it. Again, I'm not saying Windmill Slam first pick or something. I'm saying it's like, you know, like a, like a B card or whatever. Like, you know, not a great first pick. You're happy to, like, third pick it. But it's a good card. It's a card you want to play. Um, okay, Unassuming Sage again. There's nothing else. Like, I don't think Three Bowls Porridge is really playable. Maybe in a Green Ramp food deck or something, but not going to play it in my deck. Uh, Grasp of Fate. Not in Aura, just an Enchantment, so it won't really work with any of my stuff, but it is just good removal, right? But these things are when an Aura enters the battlefield, so not great synergy, and I already have good removal, but three mana kill anything is still just a good card, right? I would definitely play another Slumbering Keep card, but I don't think it could be better. It might have been right. I do have a lot of synergy. I think that this card is not particularly good, um, you know, again, playable three drop enchantments are going to go to the graveyard, but not great, but I'm not splashing and I already have one evolving wilds. If I play 17 lands, maybe I'll play the wilds. I don't know, but I'm definitely not going to play two wilds. If I'm not splashing, I'm not going to play ground seal. So that seems like the only playable if I'm short three drops or something. Brave the Wilds, uh, I don't really need it since, again, I'm not splashing, but it's still just a solid card, right? It's a tap land that I can bargain away like a, a roll or something, and then I can go make a 3-3, three, three. so that's cheap. I'll probably play one. It's a really exciting card for, like, green ramp decks. It's obviously not a very exciting card for green-white auras, but, you know, I'll probably play one. Uh, I don't know. I'm not going to play any of these. I guess I'm more likely to board this in. I don't think I'm going to play the Admirer. I have enough rulemaking, but not like a ton. I'm actually like a little short on that. I was hoping to get a few more of these mediocre rulemaking stuff like the Wear Fox and the Charm Clothier. These are both commons that like no other deck really wants that we just didn't see a lot of in this draft. But I mean, you know, three unassuming mages make rolls and like, I think I've, uh, did I get one of that fight that makes a roll? I guess not. I thought I did, but... Um, but yeah, anyways, we have enough enchantments and rolls. It's not like we didn't get them, but I thought I would have a few more. I'm not, like, super excited about that. Could use a few more auras. None in the sideboard, so just play all the ones we have, probably. So we'll take a look during deck building at how that actually ended up. I mean, like I said, it's not like, you know, it's not like we crashed. We definitely can make rolls and have auras, but I think I would like to have more than I have. But we also got Gruff Triplets and Expel the Interlopers. So we're like green-white auras, which is supposed to be a really aggro deck, but with a couple of late-game broken rares. So it's going to be interesting. Um, okay, so I might play 16. I might play 17. Oh, with Brave the Wilds and Rootwater Fawn, I'm definitely going to play 16. So assume we're going to cut a planes. So we got to cut like five cards. What I like to do when I have to make a lot of cuts, like I won't bother with this if I only have to cut one card. Whoa. Don't mind me. I almost just fell out of my chair. That's what happens when you get old. Um, okay, so I uh, when I only have to make like one or two cuts, I don't do this. But when I have to make like five, what I like to do is drag all the cards I could see myself cutting over to a like row on the right. So I can look at the cards that I'm definitely going to play and then see what fills out um, that synergy and that curve. Because like, for example, you know, I'm not cutting my Tangle Span lookouts. I'm not cutting Gruff Triplets. I'm not cutting Archon of the Wild Rose, right? So like, let's see what I could cut, right? Keep guards are good. I'm definitely not cutting all of them, but I might cut, like, one. I don't think Arena lets you move, like, one or two and keep one or two. But I'm definitely not cutting all three of these. I just don't know if I want three one-drops. But it's a powerful card in enchantment stack. But again, I make enchantments, but not, like, quite as many as I would like, right? It's not like I don't, right? Coop do, cooped Up's an aura. Three is Unassuming Sages. That's four. Um, cursed, uh, well, this makes an aura, right? So I do trigger my aura stuff. Even if it's a cursed roll that's shrinking my thing, I still get to draw a card, so that counts. So that's five. Uh, this makes it a roll, so that's six, seven, eight. So don't think I don't make rolls. Now, eight, I don't think is on the high side for this deck. I think it's very easy to have a number more like 10 to 12 roll makers. But I have eight. It's not like I don't make rolls or something or auras. Okay, so anyways, we're gonna, we're not gonna cut all three, uh, keep guards but we might cut one or two we're definitely going to play at least one we're probably not going to play all three we might but we're probably not gonna 
Frostbitch Guard's pretty weak 2-drop if you're not getting tap synergies. Playable, but not exciting. My 2-drops other than that are pretty good. I'm not cutting the Unassuming Sages because I don't make a ton of rolls. If I had like 10, 12 roll makers, I could consider cutting one or two of these. Uh, Shrouded Shepherd, I'm not really going to have any black sources except the one Root Rider Fawn. So that's cut a bowl, though it's probably good. But I think I want the roll 2-drops more. Uh, we're not cutting Cursed Courtier? Courtier? I don't know. Is it French? Uh, Knight of Doves, not cuttable. Savior's cuttable. It's fine. It can grow to a 3, 4, 4, 5. It only costs 3, but that takes time. It's not an exciting card. We're not cutting Acolyte or Grasp or Tangle Spin Lookouts or Archon or Werefox. Knight of the Valor, again, I think this card is way worse than it looks, but I don't think we're going to cut it from our Aura deck with a low curve. I'll play it when they tap out. But uh, I don't actually love this card, like I said, uh, but we're not cutting it here. We're not cutting... Again, uh, Charmed Clothier, Clothier, I don't know, is it French? Uh, Expel or Gruff, Trup, Gruff Triplets. So this looks like mostly our cuttables, so we're mostly just going to cut all of these. Um, and that works, you know, like our curve is good. Um, I don't want to go below 16 with a Gruff Triplets. And remember, it's not really 16. This Brave just gets a land, so it's 17. So it's like 17 lands and then also a Mana Producer. So that, that looks about right. So I think this is definitely the right build. I mean, I wouldn't mind having another another Slumbering Keep card. And I think there are versions of this deck where you would definitely want to play two or three of this card. But again, I'm slightly low on the roll making, and I draw extra cards and have good late game. So like, I think that, and with three graceful takedowns, I want more power out of my creatures. So I think only playing one of those is correct for what I have. But if you do draft green-white auras and you make more rolls but have less broken rares, I think you'll most likely want to play two or three slumbering keep cards and not cut them. I think they're a strong card for a more aggressive version that makes less, makes more rolls and has less power cards. You know, like, I'm going to win through Archon, through Expel, through Gruff, and, like, you know, just draw some cards off these lookouts and stuff. But more often than not, green-white auras is going to win by attacking and auring up its creatures and stuff and slumber and keep card is going to be more important and more valuable okay yeah i think that's correct let's get into the games so like i said i'm doing traditional best of three uh i like these actually a lot like i said i usually play them on magic online but i've never been a fan of single elimination i mean you know for a top eight or something sure but in general you know you draft a really sweet deck and don't get good draws or lose to a broken rare round one you still want to play round two right so i actually tend to think this league type format where basically uh Two wins wins a good prize. So you can drop when you're 0-2, because who wants to play round three when they're 0-2? But if, you, if you're like 1-1, one one, then you get to play round three. And if you lose round one, you still get to play and see if you can 2-1, you know, which is a good record, and you know, win a prize. So I really like the, the format kind of like, you know, like instead of 8-4 and single limb, I like 6-2-2-2 two, 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 basically in terms of prize payout. And I don't really like single limb. I like, I like, like more the league format where you play like, you know, all three rounds, let's say, or only two if you go 0-2 maybe. Okay, not a great hand, but perfectly fine. Obviously, we're not going to mulligan. We have both kinds of lands. Three mana, two drop, three drop. See how we draw. I really don't like Ginger Brute. Like, it was serviceable in the previous Eldrain. Unless you have some really good synergies with this, and even if you're a food deck or something, like, I don't think this is a good card in this format. I'm sorry. I know it's kind of like a meme thing, and I know people like it, but I don't think you want to be putting Ginger Brute in your deck, like, unless you really have good reason. All right, I'm definitely going to play my 2-drop here. I can use my mana on basically forever. So even though 2-mana two 2-2 two is a pretty weak card, I'm going to spend my mana and get it in play. And this curves out pretty well. 3-drop, this is a 4-drop, remember, because we'll pay 4 and play it and get, it'll be a 3-3 three, three with a roll, and then we have two 5-drops, and we already have 4 lands. Well, if I knew they had the Witch's Vanity, I wouldn't have played my 2-drop. Alright, no real decisions. This card is interesting, because, like, if you kill a 2-drop with this card, it's very good. But if you don't, it's not really playable. So, I mean, like, sometimes it's going, most of the time, probably, like, like half to two-thirds of the time, it's going to be a strong card. But then, like, a third of the time, you're just going to pay two mana and get a food token and a wicked roll, which is not a playable card. So, I don't know. You'll pay attention to your witch's vanities. Like, if you're playing best of three, you'll probably main deck it, but you might want to board it out if you don't see 2-drops out of them. 
Um, okay, we want the Tangle Span Lookout before we play our auras so that we can draw cards. So even though it's not mana efficient, I think we need to play this here. If I had the Tangle Span Lookout in my hand last turn, I would have played it over the Knight of Doves, but uh, I didn't. And every time an aura comes into play, I'm going to draw a card, and all three of these are auras or make auras. So I got to get that out first, right? Even though I'd rather use one more mana and put a 3 3 scry 1 when it attacks into play, it's definitely not worth giving up drawing a card when I play each one of these to use one more mana this turn and put out one more power. Rowan's Grim Search is a card that I like a lot. Uh, I know people have mixed opinions on this card. So the optimal time to play your card drawing is last after you've done everything else, unless you don't have land four like our opponent this game, right? So I like this card because it's serviceable both ways. If you don't have land four, don't have anything to do on turn three, you just don't bargain it. You play three, draw two, lose two, fine, move on. In the late game, though, lands are near dead. So looking at four instead of two is actually a lot closer to draw four than draw two. Because when you look at the top four cards, you just put in your graveyard two lands, and then it's practically draw four if those lands weren't going to do anything for you in the late game. Or whatever, you put a two drop that was pretty weak and not doing much in a land, and you get the two good spells. So in the late game, when bargaining this thing is easy... And it's almost a draw four. But if you but the problem with six mana draw fours and stuff like that is they cost too much mana, you fall behind, you don't always hit land six. So when that's the case, then you can play the other mode and not bargain it and play it for three mana. So this is a card I actually think is a lot better than it looks. Okay, while they're tapped, I want to slam Knightly Valor because this is like the harder one to land. Um, I don't know which one of these I should put it on. I guess I'll put it on the lookout just to deal an extra damage since I can attack profitably right now because they only have four power and toughness out, so a four or five can attack. I would rather them kill the knight than the lookout, so that's an argument for building the knight instead of the lookout. But I don't want to miss damage. If they kill it now, I'll get a 1-1 one -one flyer, and if they spend their turn killing it, I'll get to, like, you know, pump things and attack and, you know, build. I'm just way ahead, so I don't know. I think it's worth dealing the extra point, um, but that play could have been wrong. So if they trade with my two, two, if it's wearing an aura, the aura will go to the yard and I'll get another 1-1 one, one, uh, flyer. So I think I want to build my 2-2 uh, my two, two up. I Let's see. I could play expel on like calling 1, but that doesn't seem worth it just to kill a 2-2. Two, two. I think I, it looks like kind of bad to let them double block. But remember, it's going to turn into a 1-1 flyer. So I think that's good for me. So I think what I'm going to do is just play the Fawn and the Sage, use all my mana. I'm going to pump um, the Knight so that they have to trade with it. And then I'll get... Oh, what am I saying? The thing comes on the Sage. It's the Clothier that puts it anywhere. So that was a bad play, but whatever. Minimal mistake. Trade my 2-2 for one of theirs and hit them for one in the air. But that was a mistake. I maybe should have played this and put the thing on the knight. You are on the knight like I wanted to. Though to be fair, this is using six mana instead of five. And uh, it's not like important that I got an aura on the knight this turn. So I don't know. I definitely uh, messed that up. But um, nonetheless, I'm not actually sure if this play is worse than the other play. And it's not by much if it is. I'm kind of surprised they didn't trade with the knight. It's just an even trade for at least, like, this Troublemaker oof, which has no abilities in play. Uh, so you have to wonder if they're going to do something with creatures in play, because why aren't they trading their 2-2 for mine when I'm pretty far ahead on board? In a game, like, where your opponent has, like, more than you out and two cards in hand and you have seven cards in hand, you really want to keep your life total up if you can and extend the game so you can play all your cards. So even trades favor you. Now, I, I'm not looking at their hand, so maybe they had a good reason not to make that trade. I mean, probably, just like the genealogist here, uh, you can't put two rolls, really, on one creature, so they probably figured they won't trade so they can grow this into a 3-3, which, you know, is not unreasonable. Okay, so... I can 3-3 three, three flyer and pump something, or I can grasp something. None of the things they have in play are particularly impressive. 
this looks like 3-3 three, three flyer, pump the 2-2 two, two into a 3-3. Three, three. Then when they trade their 3-3 three, three for one of mine, or double block and trip the other one, I get 1-1 one, one flyers, which is especially effective for me because I have this card. So if I have like all one, if I have an army of one power creatures, then I can just sweep their board and not mine. So this time we're going to do what I talked about doing last turn, which is pump the knight. None of their creatures have reach, so I can attack with the 1-1 one, one flyer. Looks good. Of course, we're scrying lands to the bottom. Which, you know, don't sleep on it. Uh, young Hero is the best roll by a lot. But uh, the second best roll is Sorcerer by also a lot. Scry 1, when you bottom a land you don't need, is practically draw a card. So, like, that's pretty powerful, right? Plus 1, plus 1 draw a card is very good. I mean, that would be better than Young Hero. But, of course, you have to attack. Sometimes you just see a card you do want to. Then it's not draw a card. But I'm just saying, like, uh, my opinion on pumping your stuff with rolls is Young Hero is the most powerful by a lot because it can offer, like, it offers the same plus one plus one immediately when you attack as the other rolls, but then it can offer a second plus one plus one, a third plus one plus one, so that's a really strong card. But then Sorcerers with the Scry is definitely second. That's better than Ward 1 or Deal 1. Okay, so where are we at now? Still don't have any reach, so we're going to click the Flyers, which is five. And then on the ground, I'll send the 3-3 three, three to make an even trade, and I'll get my another 1-1 one, one Flyer. I can't play Expel because I don't want to kill my 3-3 Flyer. And I don't even want to show them that card since this is best of three. I can Grasp. I mean, obviously, I don't care about showing that. It's not really a trick. It's just, you know, Sorcery Speed Removal. Does it give me a better ground attack, though, if I Grasp something? I mean, they can double block the 3-3 with these two, or they can trade with their 3-2. So it doesn't really change anything for me to Grasp something right now. So I don't think there's really a reason to do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and attack with all of these. Make an evenish trade on the ground, but it creates a 1-1 flyer, thanks to the Knight of Doves. And then hit them for 5 in the air. I mean, they've got the food tokens, so they might be able to survive a little. But unless they have, like, a sweeper, um, it doesn't matter if they're spending their turn, you know, just breaking even on life. It's kind of annoying they keep saying good game every turn, but I'll just keep saying good game back to them. So they were stuck on three, so we didn't see too much. They look like a black-green food deck. Um, standard stuff, I think. We know they have Feed the Cauldron, so that's interesting. You know, we can play around that potentially a little bit. We know they have Witch's Vanity. I mean, we can't, like, board out our small stuff or something, but I'm just, if we end up with a close choice as to what to build on, we'll try and dodge those. Um, I mean, if we saw our opponent had, like, a ton of one toughness stuff, we could board in one Swamp and bring in Shrouded Shepherd. I mean, it's obviously, like, close to playable even without the black. So with a Swamp, Evolving Wilds, and Root Rider Fawn, that's fine, right? But um, we didn't see that out of them, so there's no reason to do that. I guess if we do that, we'll probably also bring in the Gumdrop. Destroy an Artifact Enchantment or Creature with Flying. I mean, we're not destroying food tokens. Green Black doesn't really have Flyers. I'm not that interested in destroying a saga after they got a chapter. That doesn't seem great. And like I said, I don't really want to destroy Ginger Brute. I don't even really think it's a playable card in this format. Sorry to those offended by that. I know there are some of you out there. No Brute for you. Okay, perfectly fine hand. Two lands, but the fawn can filter to make white. So, and three mana can cast lookout, take down fawn, sage, you know, by filtering a white. And uh, we're three lands away from gruff triplets on the draw. I don't know if you've had gruff triplets yet, but you really can't lose when the centers play. So this, this card might be number one in the set. If not, it's definitely like top five. By the way, to anybody who does go to MagicCon Vegas, I will be there. So come up and say hi if you want, if you like my content, or you know, you just want to meet me, I'll be around. To anybody not going, what are you doing with your life? $100,000 limited tournament, top eight Q for the Pro Tour? It's kind of like a double limited Grand Prix. Half the people watching this are like, what's a Grand Prix? Something old timers like me used to enjoy from time to time.
Interestingly, my opponent chose to chose to draw. I don't think this is a draw first format, and I like to draw first as much as anybody. There is good cheap removal, so like if you get like three of the red, you know, one red deal two, you could probably choose to draw, or maybe like two or three candy grapples and like you know a control deck. But the cards just do so much nowadays, and like celebration is a really aggressive mechanic, and rolls are even relatively aggressive. So I think your default should definitely be to play first in this format. But if you get a lot of cheap removal and they're not particularly, like, fast or don't have a lot of celebration, maybe you could consider it. I used to draw first about it more as much as anyone in Limited, but as the cards have gotten more and more powerful and Limited has gotten more and more similar to Constructed, uh, you just basically have to play. So just like last game, we want to get the lookout out before the Rollmakers, so we're going to play that. Even though it uses one less mana, I could have tapped out and played the Sage and the roll, but then I wouldn't draw a card. Don't want to miss drawing cards. Value, value, value. So I'm not going to trade either of these for their creature, so this turn we'll just play our Sage. I don't need to use Graceful Takedown on the, monstr the Minstrosity, not the Monstrosity. Minstrosity is pretty nice. One Toughness creatures get punished pretty easily, but top heavy creatures force trades or block well and then you get your food token and then you get value bargaining with your food token or using it with food synergy so don't sleep on minstrosity three ones are traditionally not very good but when they leave food tokens behind in the bargain format and the food format that's a different ball game i'm not saying it's a great card but it's a playable two drop and unlike the first eldrain where the food synergies were really lacking and you couldn't really do very much with them or make enough of them they went the other way in this format. Like, you know, this format, like, you are going to eat until you're, like, stuffed and ready to vomit. Like, there is so much food making in this format and so many ways to use the food. Not only Bargain, which is super prevalent, but also just all these, like, tough cookie type cards that actually make your food cards really good. So in this format, like, get ready to eat. Like, you can definitely make tons of food. Okay, no real decisions. Slam our gruff tri triplets. They may even just concede on the spot. Um, can, I don't want to trade, but they can't block 2-2, two, 2-3. Two, two, uh, so this card, again, if they kill, like, one of them, then you have two sixes, two six sixes instead of one three three. Like, and if they kill that, you have, like, a 12-12 or something. Like, this card is just, like, a joke. This is definitely, like, a standard rare. You know, like, they printed this for green mid-range and standard to have a good six drop that goes wide and is hard to deal with. And it's about the power level it should be. This is not going to be too good for standard. It might not see play, or it might see play if there's a good green disruptive mid-range deck. They, they got this power level right for constructed. But for limited, this is a joke. Like, this should be a mythic rare for sure. And uh, I think this is standard playable if there's a green mid-range deck. Again, I don't know what standard's going to look like for the next couple of years. But this is, this is a standard power level card, not a limited one. It's just very silly. All right, so I don't really know how we can lose. I don't want to let them trade with two triplets at the same time. So we'll send probably... Oh, well, they can make four four. So I guess I need to try and kill that. Um, so this turn, I'm not really going to be able to attack. But... I have two different ways to kill things, so that's fine. I guess I can uh, Charm Cloth or one of the triplets and then send that, even if they just trade their food token for it. Then they won't have a food token to activate next turn, and it'll put four power and toughness on my two gruff triplets. So that looks pretty good, right? I get to draw a card when the aura comes into play, and then they basically have to take four, or they can trade with it, and then that's just amazing for me. I mean, they might kill it in response or something like that, but... I assume they mostly left their mana up here uh, just to be able to activate a food to stop me from attacking profitably. Um, wait, these are tokens, so I can bargain one away? Oh, I feel bad for them. This is going to be ugly. All right, well, I'm going to do it. Then my creatures are just going to be huge. Uh, do I want the land untapped? Sure, I should play the land first so I can target it on tap land. Yeah, this is going to be gross. So I'm going to sack the 4-4, four, four, which means my other two will both get plus 4, plus 4.
Yeah, that's a real magic card. I think I'm going to send this 332. If they want to eat it with their food token, that's spending three mana and they're, what, taking 14 or chump blocking. Otherwise, what, they can double block. Then maybe they have a hard removal for the other one that's a 14 14. Um. Yeah, I just don't care about this 3-3. In fact, I don't even care about this 2-3. Like, I don't need to draw more cards. I'm just attacking at this point. I don't know what they're going to do, but it's not going to be good enough. Because, like, even if they kill the other Gruff triplets, like, they're losing their whole board to do this and taking a ton of damage, and I have a, a much better board than them. So even if they have, like, a hard removal here to kill the 14-14, okay, well, let's untap with all the rest of this stuff. And if they wanted to eat the 3-3 three, three and go to, like, 3 or something, maybe they could, but then I have two seven seven tramples in play. So, I mean, this is one of those math is for blockers situations. Like, you know, I'm just winning by so much, like, it's right to attack. Like, they can do whatever they want. I've ran out of the amount of times I can say good game back. Like, I never good game my opponent. You know, like, I, I don't initiate it. Like, you know, I say good game to somebody when they've beaten me in a good game, but I think it's kind of rude to be, like, you know, saying good game to someone as you're beating them. But usually if my opponent says good game to me, I say it back. But, you know, they're saying it five times a game, and, you know, I can only push the button three times. I have a limit. All right, so not the toughest match, but, you know, we had a really good draw game one, and they got stuck on lands. And then game two, we had a gruff triplets, which, as I said, Super S Terra Broken Rare, kind of a joke. Definitely designed for standard. Now, if you are trying to practice for Vegas, I do think these traditional best of threes on Arena are better than the best of one because the Handsmither really changes the value of a lot of the cards, I feel like. But I will say these are considerably softer than the Magic Online draft leagues. So that's where I'm mostly playing. I've done like 15 to 20 drafts on there. I've got four trophies and, you know, two won a bunch of others. And the competition is pretty tough. So if you want good prep for Vegas draft and for any other, uh, like, you know, premier in-person best of three, I recommend the Magic Online draft leagues. But uh, Arena's more fun, playable from your phone, and looks better. So there is that too. Okay, we're going to play... Hmm. Five lander on the play. We have a key three drop for our deck and a removal spell, but they might kill it. This is a pretty bad hand. I think I got to ship this back. Four lands I'd probably keep, but five lands I think we have to mulligan. Oh, so now we have six lands. Fantastic. And on six, I would keep five because, like, when you're going to five cards, how many spells and lands are you really going to have anyway? But I don't think I can keep six lands, so I think I have to mold this two and go to five. Well, not great. Okay, this is a good hand, though, right? Although, how is this card going to work? I'm not going to be able to cast a creature off of it, so I guess we can put Feral and Counter back. I mean, this is a late-game card. And then we can put, like, a land back, keep three lands and two castable things, potentially. We'll keep the wild, so we can shuffle this back in maybe draw it later. So we're going to keep this, of course. Put back Forest and Feral and Counter. I mean, we're probably going to lose. I think mulling to five, you have something like, you know, a 15, 20% chance to win. But this is a pretty good five. We have a three drop and then a five drop that can knock the roll off of it. So it's not a bad hand as far as five ha card hands go. And if we draw lands, then we can do that. And if we draw spells, we'll mostly be able to cast them. Most of the cards cost three or less in our deck. Maybe I should have got a planes, not a forest turn one. Do I have more? No, because Gruff Triplets is triple green. Like, I have a couple double whites, but they're, like, late game and more expensive, like this and the Archon. And uh, Gruff is triple green. So I definitely don't want to block here, right? That would not be a favorable trade. Okay, not much to do for now. But, you know, again, like, Red Tooth Vanguard's really strong. Uh, trade, and then it'll come back when I cooped up and I can just pay two. I know I'm not really showing off this, but remember I multi five, so I don't have lands to curve out and play my unassuming sage and put a sorcerer's roll on it, knocking off this and turning it into a four four scry one. So 
So 2-2 two, two draw a card, put a permanent back. I'll get this back for free later. Oh, but I want the land. But if I do that, then I only have two mana to spend, so I can't play it. Um, so I'd probably rather just play it, right? I don't really want to cooped up either of these small creatures. And a 2-2 two, two trades with, like, either one, that's fine. So I think we just attack for one lifelink and then play three mana 2-2 two, two draw a card. Usually you do use the one green part of this, but it just so happens that uh, I can't really do anything else right now if I do. Okay, well, fair enough. And since we drew a land, we can play it immediately. I mean, this is going to be a tough game to win, but do remember I'm old to five here. Maybe we can get them with the sweeper. That might have been a reason to actually play the one green and put wilds back for the second white and not put creatures in play. Let them get ahead and then sweep the board. I probably didn't think about that enough, to be honest. I mean, I had other things going. I didn't know they were going to use a removal spell on um, my creature that was in play, the uh, Clother. But uh, that's definitely something I could have considered. I think I'll give them one turn to put more stuff out. And then I'm going to go for Expel next turn. I didn't play the land uh, because that makes it look like I'm more screwed. It, you know, They know I'm not holding lands because I missed a land drop. So if I am not going to play things, it's more sus if I play lands and don't play things because they know I'm holding spells. Okay, so now just play this, sweep the board. One enchantment's going to the yard, so they're still going to get a 1-1 uh, rat here, but it's not the end of the world. 1-1-1 one, one, one rat, I can beat that potentially, even though I'm at 5. So we'll choose 0 because we're trying to kill everything. I guess actually at four because of the aura ping too. Why didn't they get a rat? Whenever enchantment you could just put in a graveyard. Does the aura go like second or something? I mean, they had a wicked roll out. Hmm. I guess the sweeper kills the creature and then the aura falls off after and the creature's gone or something? I thought they would have gotten the rat. I don't know. Guess I'm glad they didn't. Yuck. That's a nice card for them to recover with. I don't like this. So this attaches to another creature, so I want to wait if I can. I mean, I guess I'm just as happy to cooped up young parents as I am fell horsemen. Once it's in play, it's just a 3-3. Three, three. Um, I'm probably going to end up having to play this, but... Oh, wait. I forgot about that. I am playing very sloppy tonight. I apologize. This was clearly the right turn. I used all my mana. I got another creature in play to put the royal roll on. And I don't mind cooping up the parents instead of the uh, fell horsemen. It's roughly the same. Still, well, I was going to say I'm still probably losing, but this is a decent draw. If I get a reasonable creature to cast, now I can cast it and then maybe deal its power to the 3-3, three, three, hopefully. I'll probably hit Gruff Triplets and be unable to take and cast it, but let's see what we get. You got to admit... It's pretty impressive when I call the shots like that, right? You really would think I'm psychic. Five cards, only one creature, the best card in my deck, and I can't cast it. It's only this turn, right? I mean, I know I have the 3-3 three, three to play, so I'm not dead. I'm looking pretty bad. Um, but I, there's no reason to exile this, right, rather than put it on the bottom. You may cast the exile card this turn. Sigh. I have a lot of creatures in my deck. Like, I really couldn't just hit some cheap creature. It's like a joke. Oh, but it works with any creature. Okay. This is why you play with the cards to learn what they do. So that's not actually that bad. I mean, it's bad. Like, it still would be way better for me to have an extra creature in the, the clothier here still in my hand. But, you know, we killed her 3-3. Maybe they don't have anything else. We'll see. I don't want this trade. The rat's going to get a young hero. I don't want to go to one against a deck that can maybe make rats and swarm me. This is not a good situation. Um, I'm going to have to trade with it, so I guess I might as well do it now. I mean, if I had more life, I would take it, of course. So I'm not going to chump next turn. I might chump the turn after that. I do still have that 3-1 in the yard, so if I can draw an enchantment, I get back the 3-1 also. So if they don't draw anything else, this is still winnable. Of course, if I don't draw anything else, then it's not winnable.
Not bad for a molt of five, even though I'm probably going to lose. Hopefully they'll brick here, and then I can draw an enchantment or a good card. I mean, I guess I can't draw Gruff Triplets because it's on the bottom, sadly. Uh, that's not going to work since I have no enchantments. I mean, I can chump block rather than concede, but that's not a serviceable card right now. You're really seeing the power of Young Hero here. Okay, they can throw the food at me and kill me. Let's go to game two. So they're a black-white, kind of grindy, lots of removal. Um, we didn't see anything too impressive there. They really just beat me because I drew nine lands and multi five. Um, they played three removal spells, four removal spells. They have a rat out, so if I have any mediocre one toughness creatures, maybe I take those, take that out. Other than that, like just some, you know, grindy auras type stuff. Uh, do I have any weak one toughness, or like not mediocre one toughness creatures? I'm not taking Vanguard out. If they kill it, I'll just get it back. Um, yeah, the Slumbering Keep Guard, I don't want to get, I don't want that to get ratted out, so we'll take that out. Um, we didn't see creatures with power four greater, so we're not looking to bring that in. Can always bring in this 2-3 if we're going to play grindy games. It grows. Destroy an artifact enchantment or creature with flying. I didn't see a lot of that, but black-white has flyers. And they should have a decent amount of enchantments, because like this card works with enchantments, this card works with enchantments. So that that's an option. And black and white both have access to flying, though we didn't see any. Didn't see any four power except for like young hero growing a bunch. Um, I think the Savior is probably just the right card for now. If we see targets for Spider Food or the white card that kills a creature with power 4 greater, then we'll probably switch. But the 2-3 should grow. You know, again, I mean, I would, I'm not trying to complain, but I did multi-5, so I didn't have that many resources that game. Okay, two lander, two mana removal spell, one of each on the play. Perfect hand to lose with. Definitely can't mold this. If I draw one land, I have the Acolyte to draw another card, and I can cast my whole land except my Broken Rare uh, off three lands, but we probably won't draw land three and we'll lose. Well, that works. If they don't have removal, we already have land three. Definitely not going to block. Sometimes I would block. Like, if I had land three, I might block and time walk them, make them pay the two and make the trade. Obviously, with this hand, I can't block because I need to draw lands. Um, like, if I didn't top deck this land, I'd need this fawn to cast my cards. All right, so now we have a little bit of an interesting choice. Part of me wants to play Acolyte so that I can try and find more lands and play tri triplets on turn five. Part of me wants to hold Acolyte to put triplets back if they kill it. If I had, like, another land in hand, not even six, just one more forest, I think I would hold the Acolyte and play the Savior for that reason. But given I don't, I think I just want to um, play the Acolyte and draw a card. I mean, even if they kill one of the triplets, it pumps the other ones, so you don't really need to bring it back. Um, we saw the uh, two-mana deal three last game, right? They used that to kill my 1-1 one, one lifelink. I don't want to get this mana creature killed when I have triplets in hand, so I'm not going to attack. So I think... Uh, I don't. So if I'm not going to attack, do I want to tap it, make it look like I don't have land? Nah, because I don't want them to play the, like, you know blue-white fairy that kills a tapped creature or something. There's no need to be overly fancy. I'm just going to not attack to play around the deal three to an attacker or blocker because if I cast triplets, I'm like 90% to win, so I don't want to lose root, root, root Rider Fawn. Root Rider is like a tongue twister to me. Um, I don't want to lose Fawn. Okay, well, this trade I will make. If they want to spend their turn giving it Death Touch to kill my 2-2 two -two no ability. Remember, this card's good because you put things back, you draw a card, it comes into play. Now it's just a 2-2 two -two in play. So I'll trade their turn and their 1-1 one -one Death Touch for my 2-2. Two -two. I mean, maybe they didn't have anything to do anyway, but... Okay, so now they can't play the deal 3 to an attacker blocker. We have no reason to believe they even have that fairy that kills a tap creature. I wasn't going to tap it just to be fancy. What I was talking about last turn was rather than play the planes and tap 3 and cast the Acolyte, I could have uh, tapped the Fawn in 2, played the Acolyte, and then drawn, and then played a land, which would tell them, like, they wouldn't know that I, like, wasn't playing the card I just drew. So, like, that's, you know, concealing information a little bit. It's not worth taking any real risk to do that. Um... But a point of damage, it's not worth playing around an uncommon that they might not even play unless they have, like, some treasures or some way, prophetic prism or some way to cast the uh, fairy half. So I'm going to deal them. I'm going to attack now because they that card doesn't deal three to a tapped creature. It does it three to an attacking or blocking creature, and they have one black, one black mana open, so they can't cast it. So now we'll cast Tangle Span Lookout. 
And they don't know I have the triplets. Like, I didn't select it last game. So it's highly unlikely they would kill the fawn over the lookout anyway. Unless they have, like, Witch's Vanity or something that only kills a two-mana creature. And we can play Cooped Up and draw a card, which will help us get close. Ouch. That was one of the worst cards for me they could possibly play. Just kills both of my creatures here. And they may or may not make us both lose four or discard. Um, stuck on three. Now I don't know what to do. I mean, I have to discard two of these. Do I keep the triplets and hope to draw three lands? Do I keep, like, the removal spells in the 2-3 and hope to win with that? I don't know. I don't think I'm going to win without casting Gruff Triplets. I know I'm pretty far away, but most of the cards in my deck cost uh, three or less, so I can do those, and when I eventually draw lands, if I do, I can do the triplets. I don't think I can discard that card. So I think I'm going to discard one of the three removal spells. Maybe two of them. Maybe just keep, like like grasp and savior discard like graceful takedown and cooped up i guess that was quite a beating like a four for one because they discarded two lands Does not look like we're trophying here. Down a game after the multi five and running hard into the Rankles prank. I mean, it's a rare. I'm not like gonna play around it. What was I even gonna do? Not play a second creature. It does make their trade with the cat make sense because if I have three creatures and they have one and they play this card, I'm gonna be left with a creature. If I have two creatures and they have zero, I'm not left with anything. So that's why they traded the tabby for the acolyte. So that's something I could have maybe picked up on, but it's pretty subtle. Okay, so no need to grasp like this cooped up to free up a 2-3 or the 1-1 tabby. Just going to chill. I mean, if the game drags on, I have Gruff Triplets in hand. Hopefully they don't have the discard too. Nothing I can do. I'm not going to like hold the forest when I'm one forest away. Um, I guess if I would have done that, I'd deny them a rat too. But still, like these are just 1-1s. Like, I'm looking for this game to drag on so I can play Gruff Triplets, hopefully for the win. If they don't have anything exciting, I mean, this is, like like I said, a near unbeatable card here. It's not like you can kill one. They have to play, like, a sweeper or something. I mean, I know the tabby can gain death touch, but, again, even if they trade the tabby for one of them, it just turns the other two into 6-6s. Six and what if they had played, like, a three-power flyer or four-four? I didn't know I was going to draw the forest immediately, right? I could have drawn a plains. I could have drawn any spell and not a forest. So I was holding on to the grasp because I wanted to be able to kill any, like, offensive threats they play and just have the game drag on so I can cast rough triplets. So that was kind of the, the logic and the plan there. Um, I don't know what they're going to do. I mean, you do want to trade once, and I guess they could Rankles Prank again or something. I mean... I guess I shouldn't block. I mean, it's really weird. I mean, that card's a rare. Do they really have a second Rankles prank? Like, if I trade one of my 3-3s three for their, their Death Toucher here, I have two 6-6s. Six That's better than three 3-3s. Three um, and that thing could always block later. Do they really have, like, second Rankles prank? Like, probably not. Like, maybe they have a hard removal, but then they kill a 6-6. Six six, I have one 12-12 trample. I don't know. I'm going to take it because I'm a coward, but uh, this I'm not sure what's going on here. So they can deal three to one of them. The others grow immediately. That's not, that's totally fine. So I'm just going to attack them for nine, see what they have. I'm guessing it's just Kellen's Light Blades or something. Oh, that works because they shrink its power so they don't grow. That's, like, the best removal they could have against it, right? That's kind of interesting, right? I guess Candy Grapple works like that, too. Anything that gives, like, minus the power, then they don't grow. So that was actually kind of nice for them. Are they really going to grind through three of these? Yeah, they had the Light Blades, the one that deals three. Now, that one is going to grow this immediately. So now they just have to top a removal to get back in this game. Uh, I'm definitely going to want to end up killing the tabby because it has death touch. So I'm going to do it now while they're tapped so I don't have to worry about instant speed removal or something. And then, of course, I'm not going to grasp a rat token. I'm probably not even going to grasp this 3-3 unless they play something else that gives them a double block. The plan is to try and win the game with this 6-6. 
and they might play a death toucher or something big so so hopefully they don't have anything good this thing has trample so if they don't draw a removal spell we might win this game after all and we did sweet i thought we were like literally dead i thought i was like maybe 10 percent to win that game after the rankle and now we know about it too so we'll be able to play around it a little bit rankle's prank is a card that several people have asked me about um situational like sy symmetrical cards are generally not that good but the thing is since this isn't do all three it's choose how many you do you just get to choose the ones that are good for you right like if you're ahead on life deal four to both players is not much worse than deal four to them if uh you have no cards in hand or you have lands to discard each player discards two is really good if you have all spells in hand then you just don't choose each player discards two kind of the same deal with creatures right if you have small creatures and they have big ones each player sacks two is really good or if you have two and they have zero if you have big creatures and they have small ones you just don't choose each player sacks two so i think it's a pretty good card it's probably not better than candy grapple but candy grapple is an incredible common but uh, I think it's a card I don't mind taking with a fairly early pick and playing in any black deck. I think it's a pretty solid card. All right, so what did we see? Uh, we didn't see big creatures to kill with that. We didn't see really artifacts enchantments aside from one cooped up. Uh, so I don't know that we're going to change anything. I mean, they have a decent amount of removal. Maybe the Shrouded Shepherd is decent against them. They do have like a little bit of a rat thing in the warehouse tabbies. Maybe I want to give things minus one, minus one. I don't really want to put a swamp in my deck though because i have cutting a forest is pretty painful when you have triple green win the game and uh going to six planes would be kind of dicey um i mean i could always not put a swamp on my deck and just cast it only if i have the fawn but they're decent at killing creatures that doesn't seem like a great plan i guess this card might be okay sack a roll and i can kill cooped up or something like that that seems better than the two three that 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 was probably a mistake even last game having um savior in over that it's probably correct just bring in the the oof gives me a body so you know it's a cheap body to put in play to have to sack to rankle um if i want to play around the sack too by getting a third body out you know just protect one of my good creatures and i can kill like cooped up or something by sacking a roll which i'm pretty good at okay four lander unlike the five lander definitely a keep not a great hand but definitely a keep Two white, three green. We have a triple green card. We don't have a triple white card. So even though we have double white, so we'll go get a forest turn one. No real decision there. Probably just going to play the oof here. Trade with the three one. Unless I draw something else to do. And the second sage. I mean, am I going to really play two sages in a row later in the game? Maybe. I mean, I do have a lot of aura synergies, even though none of them are in my hand. Uh, are they going to play something I want to oof? Maybe. I was definitely going to play the oof over the sage because, I mean, I don't even have anything to bargain away or whatever. But now that I have two sages, I could play a sage and then I still can go sage and then hold on to the oof. I think it's better to just trade the oof off. 3-3, three, three, scry one when it attacks is a lot better than 2-2, two, two, obviously. Like, it's not close. And I only saw one cooped up, really, in like a roll or two to kill with the, the oof. So I think I'm pretty happy to play this and just trade it for the Minstrosity. That's the goal here. Slow the game down. This card's powerful, but you need the mana to cast the creatures. I didn't really realize your other creatures can do the damage. So this card's better than I thought. Um, you know, like, you can just play this as basically a two-mana bite spell on something you already have out. And in the late game, when you have a lot of mana, then you get a creature and a bite. So this card's pretty good. Like, not broken by any stretch, but first pickable. I underrated it in the draft. Each creature that's enchanted uh, by an aura you control can't attack, so that doesn't really matter. I mean, if they're putting their, if they're putting auras on my creatures, they're probably not able to attack anyway, and it drains for the number of auras you have out, which is quite good, even though they don't have any yet. Probably good enough to kill with grasp, partially because I don't have anything else to do. Like this is, of course, a really good card, and I have actually had Ariat once. Um, what is? Oh, it's just up to one. I was like, what? I can target two or something? Like, what is it saying? Um, by different opponents. This is commander wording. Um, so anyways, what I was saying was, if I had a three drop, I'm not scared they're going to play an aura and drain me for one once. So I'd probably play the three drop and hold on to grasp. Since I didn't have a three drop and my choice is grasp or basically do nothing, play on assuming stage, not, you know, with, with the little uh, pay two kicker here. 
like it's clearly correct to grasp that. It's good enough to grasp on the threat of auras, but if I had a three drop, since they don't have any auras out, I would grasp it. I would play the three drop and hold on a grasp. I can always grasp it later. It's not like it draws cards equal to the number of auras out. If I take a drain for one, okay, I'll just grasp it after that, and I took a drain for one, right? But since I had nothing else to do, I think it's a pretty clear grasp. So now they're killing my grasp and getting an aura out. Not great for me. They get the drain. Um, so I can Feral Encounter, but I'm probably not going to be able to kill the 2-4 unless I hit, like, a 4-power, 3-mana creature. That doesn't seem good. I should wait until I have more mana to cast that card. So I'm probably just going to play another on Assuming Sage. I can attack. Um, if they double block and I trade with the Tabby, they get a Rat, but they lose the Aura, which makes them lose Drain for 1. And it would be a really risky double block. And uh, it's not that bad for me. So they'll probably just take it. And then I'll get a scry, which is useful. Bottoming of planes is practically draw a card at this point. The auto tapper kind of telling them I have a double green card in hand. Hopefully they don't realize it. Because they saw it last game. And you saw how the auto tapper, when I played the unassuming stage, tapped the two planes and left the two green up. So if they're really astute, they know I have feral encounter now. Because I, I have to have a double green card and they saw that last game. Okay, so I can roll into a 4-4 and then use Feral Encounter to kill the 2-4, which is now draining for 2. But I can only play a 2-mana creature off this if I do that. Do I have other options? I mean, if I attack and they blocked, it would be great. Then I, it wouldn't work on, with the Feral Encounter, though. And they probably won't block because they're pretty far ahead. They only have one card in hand, so I could like pass the turn and just try and block with this. But that seems pretty risky. I think the right play here is to Feral Encounter now. I know I can't cast the triplets, but that's eight mana. and I, So I'm still like, what, next turn off seven, this turn after all of eight? Well, it's not that long. I don't know. This is interesting. I do really need to kill this card. So like, I don't, I don't really mind playing this and after this. Um, I can't roll. Oh, I can't roll these. They already have rolls. What am I saying? If I put a monster roll on this, one of the rolls falls off. So that doesn't even work. So yeah, I'm just going to Feral Encounter. Even if I can't kill the Ariat here, I can always kill the Tabby, which means then I'm getting drained for one less, so that's fine. Okay, so which of these do I want? 3-3 three, three, Scry 1 or 3-1 three, that comes back from the dead? It's pretty close. Wait, I definitely want the 3-1. No, I don't have another green. I was going to say I could play the 3-1, and then I could put the Monster Roll on it, and then deal 4 to the Ariat, but that doesn't work because I don't have another green. Um, but okay, I'm fine with this. I don't need to kill Ariat. Um, I'm going to kill the Tabby. They're only going to have one aura out, right, or zero, so I'm not getting drained. It's just a 2-4. They have, they have one out because they have the cooped up. But I can get drained for one a turn. That's not that big of a deal. But if I had another green, I, that would have been way better. Then I could have put the Monster Roll on the Red Tooth Vanguard with the Ferocious Werefox, and then I could have dealt four and killed the Ariat. So that would have been nicer. But this is honestly totally fine. I can get drained for one a turn at 10. Um, I don't want to attack because then I'm going to end up taking two from the area. And again, they're ahead on life by a lot. So I'm just going to chill. Oh, I'm getting kind of low. I mean, that's not an aura, right? It's just an enchantment. But I'm taking damage here in combat two. They should attack with area at two. Because if I block, we just bounce, and they shouldn't be that scared of the last card in my hand. The damage is pretty valuable for them. But uh, I'm not going to eat a 1-1 one, one and take 2 extra here, I don't think, at this life total. I can play a 4-3, which stops the attacks next turn, and I'm at 6. That's pretty nice. So I pretty much just call 0 here. I can't really wait. And if I put out the 4-3, that's going to die. So let's just get rid of this board. I mean, it's not incredible or anything. I'm just killing Ariat and a rat, but at this point in this game, we'll take it. So this is a great game three. Kill everything. Definitely want to kill my creature too in case they recur Ariat or something like that. So I'm up a four three, but I'm at six and they're at 21 with two food and they start with a scry two. So this is a pretty evenish game. I mean, they're pretty good at recursion and stuff and they have that Rankles prank that does four. So I'm 
you know, I think they're probably a favorite because of the life totals. But, you know, this is a 4-3 and potentially a monster roll. So my next draw is going to be pretty important. I also have this 3-1 to get back. Hopefully I draw a creature so I can, like, roll it, pay 2, and get the 3-1 back, and then play the 4-3. It's going to be pretty important whether I draw a creature soon or not. Well, that's a good one for them to draw. I went from saying it was about 50-50 to I'm a massive underdog now. Just going to get both of these. And, uh, of course, we don't draw a creature when we really need to. I can't even monster roll their creature to get the 3-1. So my choice is play the 4-3 or hold it. If I hold it, what I have 7 mana next turn, 2 to get that back, and 2 for the roll leaves me 3. So I won't be able to cast it. Sad, but I think I just have to cast it, right? I mean, hopefully we can draw Gruff Triplets. I mean, or just like I have Archon. Obviously not great, but I don't care about them getting food, and I'm at six, so I'm not trying to go to three, especially knowing they have a card in their deck that does four to both of us. But of course, I do have a lot of these fight spells, so that's a reason to always have a creature out. So that maybe that's an argument for taking it last turn, because I know that's a bad trade. But remember, this isn't turn two. Like, I'm going to have to make that trade next turn, and I'm just going to be at three indefinitely, which means I lose to Rankle's Prank at any point they draw it. So I'm not sure. I think the trade was correct. I mean, there's a lot more creatures in my deck than Graceful Takedowns, but there are some cards that I can't use if I uh, make that play. I guess I'm not going to Graceful Takedown. That doesn't really accomplish anything. They can attack with both and put me to one, but I don't think three and one are that different. So there is the aura that makes me discard two, but I don't think I need to hold lands because I think if they draw that, I'm just dead anyway. I mean, between the drain and the pump, I don't see how I win. So I think, like, I just have to chill. I mean, this game is not over. Like, I'm obviously in bad shape. I died to removal. You know, I died to Rankle's Prank. But if I just draw any creature that makes an aura or something like that, I then get back the 3-1. I draw a card. I have a removal spell. Like, I can flip this board. Okay, speaking of cards that can flip this board. Um, so it's not an enchantment, but it's definitely a card that can flip the board. I don't think there's a reason to kill Ariat right now. They're not going to make multiple uh, auras instantly. Oh, I don't want to go to two, actually, because of this black enchantment. So maybe that is a good enough reason to kill Ariat right now. Yeah, I think it is. I don't have any enchanted creature. Oh, wait, what am I saying? I, I'm losing my mind. This card does three. It's a two, four. I'm actually losing my mind. So we can't do that. What a game. So I die to Rankle's Prank. I no longer die to Removal, of course. Well, that's a decent card. I mean, I don't have any auras at the moment, but it's big enough to kill the area. So let's say they trade with Protective Parents with one of my Groffs to get their their young hero roll. They're going to put it on Cheeky House Mouse or area. Then post-combat, I play Archon, and then I use Graceful Takedown with Archon to kill whatever they young heroed. So that looks decent. If they have the Kellen's Light Blades, that doesn't really matter. They can kill a Gruff Triplets. It grows the other two. The question is, can I attack with all three Gruff Triplets or only, like, two? I don't want to let them trade with two at the same time anyway. But if I, but they can also just block with a 2-4. So I think what I want to do is just play Archon pre-combat, Graceful take down the Ariat with it, see if that works. And then if it does, I'll probably just attack with all three because they can't kill two in combat with blocks. And if they have um, deal three, that grows the other ones immediately. I guess they can... Oh no, destroy doesn't matter either. It still grows the other ones immediately. They do have that one card that shrinks things, but they'd have to have just drawn it because if they were holding removal, they could have just killed me on previous turns. So I think the they can't really have that card unless they drew it this turn, which they might have. I mean... They'd cast any creature they drew, but it seems hard for them to have that card. 
And I think I can now attack with all the triplets. I need to end this game quickly. If they have a removal spell, I'm not dead. I can block one creature and go to one. And I die if at any point they draw Rankle's Prank. So I'm definitely, like, trying to end this game fast. So, I mean, I think this is the right play. I'm not dead to removal. I die to Rankle's Prank if they top it. Otherwise, I've got 12 Trample and a 4 Power Flyer. They're at 20, so they're going to get, like, one more draw step, I think. Maybe if I draw a roll and draw a card and I can turn one of these into a flyer. But if I don't draw anything to do, then I can't stop them from getting another turn. I can attack for 18. They're at 20 if they sack both foods. This grows to a 3 power when it attacks. So I don't want to have one blocker back. because So if I attack with everything, they just take it all. They gain 6. They go to 2. I play this. Then I die to a removal spell. I die if they top deck Rankle's Prank. There's no way around that. But from this position, I don't need to die to a removal spell. I can beat a spot removal, right? I, they, I need to make them draw exactly Rankle's Prank to beat me. So the right play here is going to be attack with three creatures. Because I, I can't give them extra turns. Because every turn that goes by, they have at least one out, if not more. But I, it doesn't make sense to send the fourth creature. It's just two damage, and it means I die to a removal spell. If they don't draw something good this turn, they're going to die next turn anyway. I have a 4-4 four, four flyer and 12 points of trample. So the exact right play this turn, I'm pretty confident, is to hit them with these three, but have two blockers back. Because remember, Young Hero grows this to three power. So if I leave one blocker back, I die to a removal. If I have two blockers back, I don't die to removal. They have to have two spot removal, or they have to draw exactly Rankle's Prank. Looks like they've got one spot removal, so hopefully they don't top another one. That would suck. But, you know, I'm not going to leave three creatures back, I don't think, because, I mean, every turn that goes by, I can lose. So, like, I don't think that would be the right move. See if they top decked it. I mean, I can't know that they had one removal that turn, and then they'd have to peel a second this turn. It's a good sweat, though. What are they doing? They're clicking on their graveyard. What do they What do they have to get stuff back? Maybe they're just clicking to see what's in there. Maybe they're just slow rolling me before they play the removal and attack for the win. Who knows? I definitely don't. Oh, wow. That's an interesting one. So, I don't know. Return that many creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. What are they getting back? Drain for one, but that doesn't beat me. Do they have something else? Well... Now we attack with everything, and they should be dead. Wow, what a win. I thought I was going to lose both of those games. That was an exciting match. All right, 2-0, on to the final round. See if we can get that trophy. Not that there's a leaderboard on Arena, because for some reason they refuse to give us one. I have no idea. If you're going to have best of three, not even have a ranked version, you think they'd at least do a trophy leaderboard like they have on Magic Online? At least you feel like you're, you know, doing something when you get trophies, and, you know, there's that public leaderboard. It's kind of nice. I don't know why they won't put one on this. We've been asking for it for five years. I mean, I could have considered holding the extra creature back so I didn't die to double removal, but they honestly, like, they weren't holding removal because it would have killed me, like, previous to that last turn. So they had to draw the removal that turn to even have the one when they played, like, the call feed the cauldron or whatever it's called. And so, like, the odds that they top deck removal that turn and top deck removal next turn, because I'm missing, four, what, four damage if I don't send the 4-4 four, four flyer... And they had all that food. And, like, maybe if they have one removal, they kill, like, a triplets or something. Maybe it's a cooped up or the minus X minus X. And I really don't want to give them extra draw steps in a game where I'm at one. You know, because I know turn after turn, or at three, but turn after turn, they can draw Rankle's Prank to beat me. So I wasn't trying to give them extra draw steps. So this is interesting. Um, here's why. I want to bargain this Brave the Wilds to get rid of the curse on this, but I don't have land three, so what do I do? If I had a weaker hand, like if I didn't have the lookout, I probably wouldn't play the Brave the Wilds. I'm pretty greedy, but I really can just go turn three lookout, and then turn four, when this comes into play with a cursed roll attached to it, I get to draw a card. Even if it's shrinking my creature, it's still an aura. So I think the right play is just to Brave and not be greedy, given the strength of my hand. I have a lot of cards that make rolls. I mean, granted, all those 2-2s two only make the roll on themselves. But um, I'll probably find another way to knock the roll off. And if not, like, I'm drawing cards. 
off the lookout. That's decent. So for once in my life, I chose not to be greedy. I'll probably get punished and draw like all lands because, you know, that's how magic works. But uh, I think that was the right play with a two lander with all these good three drops. Like, I don't even really want to play this one on turn three. I want to play the lookout on turn three. Usually I say greed is good, but in this case, I don't think so. So this is the kind of situation where if you don't have anything, you should bluff. Uh, bluffing in magic is generally like not worth it because if they block and kill a creature, that's so much more punishing than two um, damage is rewarding. But no one's ever going to block with the Lookout in this spot because if you're playing Lookout in green-white, you're like an Aura's deck. This is a really powerful card to untap with. So, like, if you're not, like, you know, if you can do it, you know, keep your cool and everything, attack with a 2-2 and expect your opponent to just take the 2 and never block there. Okay, so this turn I'm just going to play the second Lookout because the more cards the better. See, Greed is still good. Uh... I wanted to be able to cast my spells, but I would I would like to draw two cards, not one, when I play this or this. So we'll put out the other lookout now. And of course, if they attack, I have to take it, but hopefully next turn we'll be able to start blocking. So we can put back a permanent. We don't have any... I mean, this card draws two when it comes into play. This card draws one when it comes into play. This card will always draw one. These lookouts might not stay in play forever. It seems like a no-brainer. Maybe they're going to, like, have a second one of this one-mana removal spell that's Torch the Tower and sack, like, this curse to Torch one of these. Can't do anything about that. Then we'll only get one card instead of two, but we get rid of the roll. Um, yeah, I probably want to draw that removal, right? Kill kill one of their creatures. Looks all right. Well, I do have a five drop in my hand. Maybe not. Five mana aura comes into play and draws a card. Do I want to draw this graceful takedown? I don't know. So if I draw a land next turn, I could double spell with Acolyte and Takedown. That's pretty good. If I don't draw a land, I don't really want this. Still don't have any permanents because all the removal has been exiling these two torches. So I can't get anything back. But I could make like a block here and then get put the creature back on top. I think I'm going to take this. I'll leave that on top. I think the plan is going to be to try and play grindy now. I mean, if I can run them out of cards, I have like a lot of ways to draw extra cards. And I don't mind trading off the lookout or something because I'll just put it back on top and draw it again immediately. So I'm definitely going to trade with the 3-1. It's kind of a weird attack with the 3-1, no? Do they really want to trade it for Slumbering Keep Guard or something? Um, well, I mean, I'm not going to trade the 1-1 Lifelink for it. I'll attack back. I really want to kill this, but I can't do that, right? There's no way to do that right now. I mean, I obviously can't double block it. It's a 3-3 and I have two one ones. It would be good to untap and graceful take down it, but is there even a realistic way for me to do that? I think next turn it's going to go to a 4-4, four, four, so that's a little scary, but... I mean, I, I definitely have to block this, and then I'll gain one back. The real question here is really, do I want to put this 2-3 back on top? I think the answer is yes, but maybe not. I mean, it's a really good card in my deck. But I'd rather draw a land and just turn this into a 3-3 and make a 2-2 and hit. I think a land is just a better draw. So I don't think I put it back on top. I can always do it later, like on my upkeep or something. But I really want to draw a land this turn. So I think the right play this turn is just take the draw step. Unfortunately, since it's not a roll, it doesn't uh, knock the roll off. But now what I can... I can always put it back on top, like, on my upkeep or something anyway. I mean, I miss out on a card from playing an aura, potentially. 
But now I have creatures in play to graceful take down the, the boundary land ranger if they didn't kill it. Um, okay, so it's not going to grow bigger than a 4-4. I mean, I'm not blocking, but the thing is, what are my woodlands acolyting? I think now I don't want to draw land, so I should put one of these back on top. I don't have more auras, so I don't know if I want um, if I want the tangle span looked out. I don't know what I want now, really. Um, the knightly valor is pretty powerful, but if I draw it, I can't cast it this turn. I play the acolyte. I hit for two. I take four more down to five. Then, well, I could double block. No, I just can't spend the mana, right? I just want to. No, none of my creatures are enchanted, so I can't graceful take down for four. So I do need to get the aura back, I think. Hmm. This is tight. This is tight. Um, so I get this back. Oh, I play this and draw a card. And then I can either double block or take it. If I, I don't necessarily think they have tricks left. I mean, they've played a lot. If I double block, I have no creatures left in a knightly valor and graceful takedown of my hand. That's pretty bad. So I don't want to do that. Um, so maybe I just put this back on top. I have a lot of roll making, and then I can double block, and then I have the 2-3 in hand. That seems better. I mean, a land is not a good draw right now, so, and I have double white cards and stuff, so I think I have to put something on top. Like, these are pretty powerful cards. The question is, do I want this or this or this? They're all pretty reasonable. Um, I kind of honestly want the life linker. Maybe that's the right play. Because then if I draw a roll, I can have a 4-4 lifelinker. And if I'm going to try and stabilize low, um, I think the lifelinker really is kind of almost unique value here against a Boros aggro. It's really tough between, like, the Valor, the Lookout, and the and the Courtier. It's really close. If you're watching this, please comment in the chat which of the three you would put back on top right now. I think it's extremely close. I think I'm going to go with the lifelinker. It's a very, like, cowardly play, but I'm not really going to win if they have more good cards in hand. And if they don't have good cards in hand, then this is the card I definitely most want to draw. Now, this turn, I'm not playing it because it's a 1-1. One, one. I'm playing this so that I can double block. I mean, I guess I should have attacked first because my creature has Vigilance, but whatever. But, um, but yeah, I think this is correct, but I'm not sure. Unfortunately, since neither one is enchanted, I can't uh, take it down. But I don't mind this double block um, if they don't have anything cool. If they do have something frown, we'll see, but... Well, they had the ability to discard a card to draw a card, and they chose not to. I was expecting them to rummage away a land. Now I'm not going to double block. I'm going to go back to being a coward, because they have no lands in hand. How do they not discard and draw? What do they have in hand? This is going to be hard to win, but knowing that all three cards in their hand are not land, uh, I, I don't think I can double block. Okay, so see what we get. Um, Feral Encounter, I think, for sure. Cool. 4-4 four, four Flyer, kill their 4-4. Four, four. I don't know if I'm going to win or lose, but we still have a game, for sure. Going to attack with the Vigilance, because I'm happy to trade. They may have ways to pump their creatures, um, so an even trade works for me. Not going to send the Acolyte because it doesn't have Vigilance, and they can play that 3-mana 2-2 two, two that gives things haste, maybe play another creature at the same time. So I'm happy to make an even trade, but I'm not looking um, to tap any creatures to deal to here. Still going to be tough, because I know they have all spells in hand, but my hand's pretty good now, right? If they don't kill the Archon, this is going to be like a... what a. I don't know what it's going to be. This turns it into a... It's going to have the curse on it, but it's also going to be a 4-4 uh, flying. I mean, it's going to have lifelink either way, but I don't actually know what its power and toughness is going to be. We'll find out, hopefully. Because if they kill the Archon, I'm probably not winning. But if I untap with this Archon, if they just play another creature here, I get to play the lifelinker, fight off their best creature, gain some life. We might be in a winning position. Might be able to turn this game if they don't have removal for the Archon. Interesting. Well... They could, leave, they could not cast this because they don't have an attack really anyway, right? They send all three. I eat one, trade with one, and go to two. I mean, unless they have a way to deal the final two, that's not good for them. So maybe they have a three mana card. Maybe they don't. Maybe they're just holding this for when they play another creature. I don't know. I mean, this card's a sorcery, so I pretty much have to play it. So first, let's play this and see how big it is. 
Because they could have, like, the deal three bargain or something. So I want to do this stuff pre-combat. So it's just a 1-1. One, one. I guess the uh, curse trumps it, because it does get flying. This might be, like, an order of the card scenario. I could be wrong on this. Again, in the chat, if you're a judge, if you know how this works, please correct me. I think if this courtier, 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 courtier I don't know what it's pronounced. If this was out uh, and then I played the Archon, it might turn into a 4-4 four, four because the Archon comes in afterwards. But since the Archon was already out and this comes in afterwards, it's 1-1. One, one. I think that's how it works, but I could be wrong. But anyways, now I can play the takedown with this and this and kill something if I want to. Just don't even know if I want to. The creatures they have out are not very good. Um, and if I ever get this roll off, I can gain so much more life with this. So I think I'm mostly just going to chill. I'm not scared of them going creature and this. I mean, I guess I'm a little scared of it. I'm going to have to block with a 1-1. One, one. I don't know. It's interesting. So what's going to happen? Let's say they play like a 2-2 two, two and this and attack with all four creatures. I can't take two of them. I have to block three. So I'm going to eat one, chump one, and trade with one. Yeah, that's not great. I should probably just kill this Boundary Lands Ranger. I mean, they can't kill the 4-4, four because four, if they could, they would have just done that on, my, on their turn. Um, like, outside of combat. Maybe they could have the bargain thing or something, and they didn't want a two-for-one themselves sacking the knight token. This isn't great, but I'm kind of scared, because this gives haste N plus 1 plus O to everything the turn they play it. So I have to be prepared for them doing that. And, like, I'm not attacking, so it looks like I'm just sitting around waiting to lose, but I'm not. If I draw a single card that puts a roll on a creature, then I can roll up this uh, knock off the curse, and I will have, like, a 5-5 five, five flyer. So, lifelink. So then, they, then I'll just win the game. I'll create a Baneslayer Angel. So this is a tight one. Um, they made the two rats. They could play both of these, five to three, but I'm not dead on board. They could force me to block with this, but I'll be able to trade it for, like, one of the rats and eat something with the Archon and trade even with the Acolyte. So this is actually just a really tight game on board at the moment. And uh, if they don't make me trade away this, like I said, if I draw a way to, to roll it, then I knock off this Cursed Roll and I have a 5-5 five, five Flying Lifelink, and then that's Baneslayer Angel, and that game's over. I'm gaining five a turn in the air. So, I don't know. This game can go either way. It's going to come down to my next draw step or two and what they have. Don't draw land this turn. I need to, I need to roll this. Yuck. Well, now I'm going to lose. If they attack with everything, I'm probably just dead. Uh, I'm going to hold both cards to try and, you know, make them think I have something. But they're Boros Aggro. They're probably going to play their stuff, attack with everything, and win. This was a really tight one, though. Like Just like last round, this has been a great draft. So, if I block three, I gain one life. I'm at seven. I assume I'm dead, right? Seven creatures to three means I can only let... I have to let four through. So even if all four of them have two power, that's eight. So I'm dead. So good game. I'll say good game to them for that. That was a good game. I wonder if I could have sequenced differently to win. I don't know. I think my plays were right. I think putting the lifelinker back was correct. Okay, so I probably want the Shrouded Shepherd. Minus one, minus one. You know, the Cleave Shadows plan against Boros Agra, right? Kills the mice. The Rat Catcher. The lab rat tokens here. Uh, they have a nice Boros aggro. This is a very nice version of the stack. Cut in is one of the cards that's most impressed me. You know, a lot of times the four mana deal four, five mana five, five isn't that good. It trades around even on mana, and that's it. But a young hero roll is almost worth a card, like a small card, but almost a card. Because like one one's not a card, but like two two's a card, three three is definitely a card. So, like, and it triggers Celebration. You know, you have to play something else, but, you know, you get a roll out of it. So if you can play, like, a two-drop in this, you trigger Celebration. But uh, the Young Hero roll is worth, like, half a card, maybe two-thirds of a card. So, like, this card is just very good. Cut-In is, like, not as good as Torch the Tower, obviously, because it's hyper-efficient. But it's a good quality removal spell. Like, you want multiple copies of Cut-In in any deck, even aggro. And they have multiple copies of Cut-In, multiple copies of Torch the Tower, these good uncommon creatures. I like their deck a lot. But yeah, so I think we want this because it kills tons of things. I would like spider food for the food, but I didn't really see any artifacts or enchantments minus a couple rolls, so we can't really do that. Um, so that's probably all we're going to do. I mean, it's not like my curve is bad. Look how cheap all my cards are. And we'll just take out something like kind of slow, bring my deck down a little bit against them. Um... They've got those instant speed removals. Knightly Valor's kind of expensive and powerful. I'm going to take that out. Oh, I forgot to put in the swamp. I apologize. I mean, it's not the end of the world. I have the filter thing. But the point of bringing that card in was to play the black half, not the white half. If we go to game three, I'll put the swamp in. 
that was bad. Um, all right, so I'm going to play first. They're an aggro deck. Definitely going to keep this. I mean, I'm probably going to lose. Um, you know, they have two torch uh, removal, so they can kill this, and uh, this is not a good hand. But I have the sweeper to bail me out, and they didn't see it last game. So if they get really far ahead, I can always sweep the board. And uh, in the event where they don't have that card then uh, to kill this, then I'll roll it with this, and then, uh, then I'm looking good. Then I got a 4-4 lifelink. I mean, I don't assume that plan's going to work. I, think, I mean, you know, if they tap out, I can do it, gain four once, and then they'll kill it with, like, cut in or something. But, uh, you know, I have the expel the interlopers. So if I can, like, kind of mess around and gain life and stuff, that's pretty good for me. Even though I don't really want to race, they might be able to trigger Celebration. So I don't know if I should attack with the Sage here or not. And it's pretty hard to trigger on turn three. So maybe I won't attack. I don't want to miss damage. Um, but I think there's a good chance they can't trigger Celebration here yet. Armory Mice is another one of those three ones that you should not sleep on. Like, out of aggro decks, like, this card, when you celebrate it, it's a 2-mana 3-3, three, three, and it's really hard to block. Oh, that was bad. I saw that card last game. Well, whatever. I'm probably going to need the Sweeper to win anyway. And uh, now we're going to do the 4-4 four, four Lifelink thing. And we can do that at instant speed. So let's attack for sure. This is an instant, yeah. That wasn't actually bad. Like, it might have been right, it might have been wrong. Like, not blocking against um, Boros Aggro is not a great plan. Uh, but I should have thought of that and really thought through whether I wanted to do that or not. But while they're tapped, I'm just going to take all this life now. Uh, even if I'm going to play the Sweeper much later, uh, I'm pretty happy just to kill their, their good stuff, gain all this life, make them overcommit. Because I don't expect this to stick around. They have double cut in. Uh, if it does stick around, that's great. But if they cut in it, you know, the plan is going to be play the 4-3. They'll probably use another removal or a trick and get through that. And then they'll be way up on board, and I'll expel and try and turn the game from there. I know uh, it's not necessarily going to go that way, but that's the plan. And, like, if we don't play creatures, we just tell them what we have. And they, they're going to have all these tricks and removal to work through our stuff anyway. Like, they're going to sack a rat and play, like, Torch now and kill the Werefox. So then, hopefully, it'll line up where they can, like, roughly dump their hand, and I can expel. And if I draw a big creature now, I will sandbag it, but I couldn't really sandbag the Werefox, and I don't think I wanted to sandbag that removal to gain four that early. Because, I mean, I don't even have double white. We don't know when I'm expelling. So I think this is right. Uh, I'd say this is a close game. I know, you know, it's not looking good in cards on board, but, you know, if I expel and sweep the board here, I have, I have a lot of life, so... Okay, so I'm not going to play a land. Again, just like last time, I'm going to be, like, more tricky. Make it look like, you know, like I can't cast my cards. Hopefully they'll dump out the rest of their creatures and won't play around a sweeper. Don't know if they're going to or not. We'll see. I mean, they didn't see it, so playing around a double white rare that they haven't seen when I don't even have a planes in play is kind of dicey. Obviously, now we're going to sweep the board. Choose zero. And then it's just going to be a top deck battle, and my deck's more powerful than theirs, but uh, they're drawing first, and we'll see how it goes. Hopefully they don't draw anything too soon. Well, it's a pretty good one, but they're not in great position to celebrate. It'd be nice if I'd stop drawing lands. That's, uh, what, four, six, seven, nine of them already? That's a lot. I'm thinking of a Gruff Triplets, or that double green rare that looks at five. Hey, there it is. I have a forest, so if I hit triplets, I can cast it. Cool. Let's see what we get. Oh. Oh, you don't say. Is there anything sweeter than calling your shots? That's how the professionals do it. I'm thinking of a feral encounter in the gruff triplets. <laughs> That's how you get in the Magic Hall of Fame, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so game three, round three for all the marbles. They're on the play. I'm going to bring that Swamp in. They have a lot of one-toughness creatures. I definitely want to be able to cleave with the 2-2 um, the that I boarded in. Did I see anything else? I mean, they don't really have flyers, artifacts, or enchantments aside from rolls. I would like spider food for the life, but I don't think that could be correct. And they don't... I mean, they could get to 4 power with all their young hero. And Indestructible could be okay to save my stuff, but 3 is a lot against an aggro deck, and I'm going to be on the draw. So I could consider that if I have anything bad... But I don't think I really do. Even the Knightly Valor, like, I'm an Auras deck. I didn't really want to board that out, though I think it was correct. There's nothing I really want to take out, right? 
I mean, my cards are not very expensive. I could take this out. I mean, all I'm doing is trading one of my 1-1 one, one for one of theirs. That seems dicey. Maybe, maybe bring in, like, oof to be able to get rolls. Or the destroy a four power at instant speed could be a thing, or indestructible could be a thing. I don't know. What do you think? This is tough. Um, well, either way, so I don't forget, let me bring a swamp in. I have to take the planes out. That's part of why I didn't do this in terms of main deck. But against their deck, it's definitely correct, because they have tons of one toughness creatures. Two mana, give minus one, minus one to all their creatures is very good against them. So that's definitely correct. Um, if I get, you know, screwed on the double white, that sucks. I have good double white cards, but it's worth it, you know, for this. And I can't board out green. I have this card, which gets mana for green, and then this double green, the best card in my deck is triple green. Um, and then what do I want to bring in, though? Either that white trick that gives indestructible, or, like, the oof can kill a roll. I don't think my rolls are really going to stick around. I don't think I'm going to be bargaining much. Um... I don't know. None of these seem particularly good to me against them. Yeah, I'll try one of these tricks. I mean, I'm not... It's it's not super smooth, but I'm sure I want black and one, minus one, minus one to all their cards, right? It kills so many of their creatures. So, I don't think I could have took out a forest when I have brave and I have a double green and a triple green. That's the best card in, like, my deck. I win every time I cast it, as you've seen. Um... I'm not going to go to 18 lands with this deck. There are some decks that would go to 18 lands. So that feels correct. I mean, obviously, I'm keeping this. I have to decide whether I get a Plains or a Swamp. Um, probably, well, I would have gotten a Plains. Now I'll just go get my Swamp. I know I don't have third forest, and that's Gruff Triplets, but Brave can go get a forest, and, like, I'm going to draw a forest. I have a lot of them in my deck by the time I cast rough triplets probably but even if i don't i'll just get it with brave so we'll go get the swamp turn one they're probably like huh so i have a slow hand but they do too it looks like i mean there's not like a flash creature here so this is good i can go turn five expel turn six gruff turn four were fox as long as i don't die like before that um, I mean, I like Sweeper. This is like a standard deck. Wrath into triplets. Like, that is literally a standard quality strategy. Good stuff. Uh, yeah, just cast this. I'm just going to block two unless they trigger Celebration main phase. If they give minus one, minus one to everything, I don't really care. I have the Sweeper. Um... I mean, sorry, not minus one. That's what I do. I mean, if they make two rats at instant speed to trigger celebration, I don't really care. I have the sweeper. So if they attack, I'll block. Obviously, I wouldn't chump block if they um, if they triggered celebration main phase. I guess the one downside to getting that swamp was, like, I might actually not have t really the mana to play brave, even though it only cost one. That might have been a mistake. Maybe I should have gotten forest. I can go get the swamp later. Um, okay, I don't care if they start sacking lands. They're not beating gruff triplets in the long game. So I think this is going to be cooped up the 4-3. Brave for a forest. This ensures that I can play Expel next turn if I want to, and triplets the turn after that. Obviously, on this board, I'm not necessarily going to Expel. But even if they just put out like one thing, let alone two, I probably will Expel. Because, I mean, I don't know how they're going to be Gruff Triplets. So all I need to do is really not get overrun and keep my life total high and then play Gruff Triplets, right? So, that's the plan. Sweeper into Broken Rare. Their deck is a lot better than mine. I feel kind of bad for them, but, uh, you know, I'm no fan of the rares, but everybody uses them against me, so I have to use them when I get them. But their deck is really good. My deck's good. Like, this isn't, like, so shocking to me. I went 3-0 in these leagues with this deck. But their deck is a lot better than mine. They have a really near-perfect Boros Aggro. Lots of the best removal and lots of the great uncommons for the deck and a good curve. And Their deck is just awesome. Like they're, like I said, my deck's good. There's nothing wrong with my green-white deck with my rares and plenty of synergy and removal. But uh, I think their deck is incredible. They're just losing to rares here.
So, hey, we can just destroy their four power creature. I don't even know if I want to or not. Um, so I have this. So what I think, what I want to do ideally is play the Archon and then attack with like one or two of these. And if they block one with the Edgewall pack, I could play the Were Fox. But, you know, they also could blow me out if they have like a deal three in response. I know they already played one towards the tower. Now I can give my creature indestructible. Uh, and this gives plus one, plus one anyway, so I don't need to play the Archon first. It would be, like, a little more damage. It would turn a 3-3 three, three, and a 4-4, four, four, but that's not necessary. So what I think I'm going to do now is attack with, like, what, one or two of the triplets. And then if they block with the 4-4, four, four, I go for the roll. If they have the removal, I just respond with indestructible and I'm good, right? And then they get blown out. Like, um, if they take it, I can play, like, Archon and Fawn, giving me three blockers to their three. I'm at 14. That seems fine. So I think the right play here is to send two. Okay, they didn't block, so I, they, they don't have deal three, almost for sure. So this turn, they'll most likely, like, cut in the Archon or something like that. But it's fine. My blocks are fine. Remember, if they trade with this 3-3, three, three, it gives plus three, plus three to my other two creatures. So... Like, they're kind of caught between a rock and a hard place here. If they win this game, I will be incredibly impressed. Because, like, they can't, like... Like, let's say they attack with Edgewell Pack. I'll just double block, right? And then, like, when this dies, it grows my stuff. Or they're trading Edgewall Pack for a 1-3. If they have a trick to blow me out, quote-unquote, that doesn't really matter much either, right? Like, I still just get the counters on tap and kill them or something. So... I think we're going to untap and win the game. I don't know. They obviously have something because they have priority right now. But, like, a removal spell isn't going to do it. I'm at 14. Unless they're going to, like, exile the 3-3 or, I don't know, tap it. But then I'll just still untap and kill them. Just, you know, block, like, a 3-2 with the Archon. I don't know. I mean, the set came out a week ago. I've played, like I said, 15 to 20 drafts. I know all the commons and uncommons. I mean, maybe they have some mythic I've only played against once or something. I don't know what they're going to do. I don't think they can win, but we'll see what they have. Something like this. I guess this is a vanilla one. I'd rather kill this one. It has an ability. But on board, this block is great, and I'm sure they have a trick. I just, I guess they could exile this so it doesn't die, but then... Whatever, I eat the Boundary Lands Ranger, and I chump to save 5 damage with Root R Rider Fawn. I'm cool with that. So I, I don't really see how they're winning, but we'll see what they have. And if they can't exile the 3-3 three, three triplets, if they're going to kill it, like, they're just going to be dead to the other two Gruff triplets. So, I don't know. And unless they're interacting in both places, if they're interacting on the triplets, then they're not interacting on the Archon. So I'm eating the 3-2 and on tapping with my 4-4 four, four flyer. So they did have the Exile It, which is, you know, a good effective card against it. It doesn't grow. But, like, again, I still have plenty of life. Um, so I assume they're not dead, but let me see. This gives a creature plus 1 plus 0. So I have 4. It might, they might, it might be 14. It's pretty close. 4, 7, 10, um, 11... 12, 13, I think. Like, if I roll this now, it goes to base power 4, 4, plus it gets a plus 1, plus 1 from the roll, so it's a 5. So it's 5, 8, 12, 13. So I'm one point short, so I can't kill them this turn. Um, so I'm going to play very defensively because I'm in such a good spot. So I think I just want to roll... And then play this, like hit them for like five, have three blockers back, make sure I can't die. Um, they can't have removal and response again, really. It's not really practical, like possible. Um, five, let me make sure I count it right. Five, nine, 12, 13. Yeah, so I'm one short. Uh, maybe I could have blocked differently to ensure lethal this turn. But again, like I don't think they're going to lethal me. Like I have three blockers to their three attackers. They have one card in hand. Like they used their tricks last turn. I don't really think I can take 8 here. Maybe it's conceivable somehow. I don't know. Be win of the year for them for sure. I would definitely tip my hat and applaud them if they win this game.
Yeah, I mean, that's a decent one, but again, nowhere near enough to win the game. Just going to double block. They can trade with the Werefox. I take no damage. I think they just realized that. Um, okay, well, the, so they're at nine. All my stuff has trample, so they're dead on board unless they have something because I take down this edge wall pack. Grace will take down it. And then they have two, the rat can't block. And all three of these have trample, right? Four, three trample, four, four trample, three, three trample. So I have 11 points of trample over two toughness, which means they take exactly nine and die. And if they have anything, I have moment of valor on the backup. So I feel good. We defeated the ultimate Boros deck, but yeah, I mean, rares are silly and wrath into gruff triplets is silly and gruff triplets should be banned from limited. I'm sorry it exists. I would not have put it in the set if I were working for Wizards uh, R&D, but I'm not. So uh, I have to cast the cards I draw, but Gruff Triplets is silly. If you open it, you should take it. You should try and draft more of a green ramp deck. And uh, a little tidbit here. Um, if I don't usually play a card like Commune, the one green that looks at five and put choose a creature and put it in your hand, because it's just not really worth adding one to the ca pow the casting house of creatures to have a little bit of selection. But if you have a card like Gruff Triplets, play all of those, because then you just dig through your deck, find your Gruff Triplets, cast in and win. So when you have a true S tier bomb, then you want to play cards like Commune that look for them. Uh, and ideally, you're not like an aggro deck like this where that doesn't really synergize with Gruff Triplets. Ideally, you're more of a green ramp deck that draws cards, puts out extra mana, and looks through its deck and stuff. But I didn't really have the option to do that because I opened the Gruff Triplets after I was already solidly in green-white with a bunch of the uncommons. So anyways, uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, it's been a while. There should be more to come. Uh, let me know on anything I can improve, and I will see you next time.